Hello everyone. Welcome to today's session. Our objective today is to study the flow measurement using Venturi meter, orifice meter and rotameter. Let us first study about Venturi meter. A Venturi meter is a device used for measuring the rate of flow of a fluid flowing through a pipe. It consists of three parts. An inlet section followed by a convergent cone a cylindrical throat and a gradually divergent cone. The inlet section of the venturi meter is of same diameter as that of the pipe which is followed by a convergent cone. The convergent cone is a short pipe which tapers from the original size of the pipe to that of the throat of the venturi meter. The throat of the venturi meter is a short parallel side tube having its cross sectional area smaller than that of the pipe. The divergent cone of the venturi meter is gradually diverging pipe with its cross sectional area increasing from that of the throat to the original size of the pipe. At the inlet section and the throat of the venturi meter pressure taps are provided. The working of venturi meter is based on the principle of Bernoulli's equation. Now let us study about orifice meter. An orifice meter is a device with a hole in it that measures how fast a fluid is flowing by measuring the pressure decrease across the hole. An orifice meter consists of a flat circular plate with a circular hole called orifice, which is concentric with the pipe's axis. Finally, let us study about rotameter. A rotameter is a device that measures the volumetric flow rate of the fluid in a closed tube. The rotameter is a variable area meter that consists of an enlarging transparent tube and a metering float that is displaced upward by the upward flow of fluid through the tube. Now let's see how to calculate the rate of actual discharge. First and foremost, we must define what a coefficient of discharge is. A coefficient of discharge is the ratio of actual discharge to the theoretical discharge. For a venturi meter and an orifice meter, the actual discharge equals the ratio of the product of the area of the measuring tank and the rise of the water level in the measuring tank and the time taken for rise of water level in the measuring tank. For a rotameter, the actual discharge equals the ratio of the product of the area of the measuring tank and the rise of water level in the measuring tank over the time taken for the rise in water level of the measuring tank multiplied by 3600 and 1000. Let's talk about the industrial applications of the flow measuring devices. The uses of venturimeter includes gas, liquids, slurries, suspended oils and other processes where permanent pressure loss is not tolerable. They are also used in large diameter pipes such as those found in the wastewater treatment process. When it comes to the orifice meter, they are used to measure the flow rate of fluids in their single state as well as mixed state such as wet steam or natural gas with water. They are used in industries like natural gas industries and refineries. The applications of rotameter extends across industries because it was and still is an economical way of measuring very low to high flow rates. Let us now see a demonstration of the experiment. Hello everyone, uh, this experiment over here uh, is for uh, measuring the discharge rate of uh, different flow measuring devices. We have venturi meter, orifice meter and uh, the last objective which, uh, of this experiment is to calibrate the rotameter which is here. All these flow measuring devices are in this one test rig. So now how does these uh, devices work? So for example, this venturi meter over here. As you guys can see, uh, the water will be flowing from left to right and uh, as it moves towards the throat, the velocity will be the max maximum over here at the throat and the pressure will be the minimum. And as it moves away from the throat, the velocity will start to decrease. And so that is the basic Bernoulli's theorem we have to apply in this venturi meter. And uh, as you guys can see these two points over here, these two points will be measuring the pressure difference which is being created as the water flows from left to right. And the pressure difference can be measured in this manometer over here. The manometer has a scale which shows us the height difference.
Once that is done, uh, the water is being collected in the measuring tank and we use the stopwatch and how much water is collected in the measuring tank, we can get to know the discharge rate. Now moving towards the orifice meter, now this is another flow measuring device. Over here also the water is flowing from left to right and the water passes a circular disc which is having a very small hole. So the water, there is a contraction happening at this disc over here. We have these two points which will basically measure the pressure difference and the pressure difference again will be calculated using the manometer over here. Once you measure the height uh, in the manometer, we can uh, measure the discharge rate, a similar procedure as we will be collecting the water in the measuring tank and uh, noting down the time and, and how much water is being collected in the measuring tank. Once that is done, the last final part of the experiment will be to calibrate the rotameter. Now we will start the rotameter, set it at a flow rate. Once the flow rate is set, we will again measure the discharge rate. Similar procedure will be applied over here as well. We will collect the water in the measuring tank and uh, note out the time for how much time, how much water is being collected and uh, we will be calibrating and looking at the discharge rate value which we obtained and uh, how much is the reading in the rotameter. So that's how the calibration will be done. How do we do this upon this experiment over here? So first we turn on the pump. All the valves are open over here. We are, our main focus right now is for the oil pipe meter. So we close the other valve. And only the water will flow from the oil pipe meter. Once the water is coming from left to right, there is a pressure drop happening at these two locations. It is being measured using the manometer. As you guys can see, uh, we have three different height regions which we have to work out. Once this height difference is measured and the region is being measured, now we are trying to find out how much water is being collected in this measuring tank using the stopwatch. So I am fixing a time of 10 seconds. Right now the initial height is at 0. So I start collecting the water in the measuring tank and wait for 10 seconds. Once 10 seconds is done, the water is being collected over here in the measuring tank with height only seen in the scale given below. Once we have all these data, we can get the discharge rate of the oil pipe meter. So, new procedure should be followed in the venturing meter. This is how the water is flowing in the venturing meter, and the similar procedure will be applied over here, what is being applied in the oil pipe meter. First, we measure the manometer reading, then we will do the measuring time. 10 seconds, water is being connected to the next time. Once that is done, we will move towards the rotor meter now. First, we select a desired flow rate we want in the rotor meter. So, for example, I am setting it at 200. The flow rate is at 200 right now. And uh, we have to perform the procedure over here in the rotor meter. The water is flowing from the rotor meter and we will be collecting it in the measuring tank. Soon 10 seconds will be recorded. So I start the timer. Wait for 10 seconds. So once the 10 seconds is over, we can see how much water is being collected in the lighting tank and we can use that reading to get the discharge rate and we can calibrate our rotor meter if the rotor meter is giving the correct value. So this is shown in the reading. Thank you Saad for the experimental procedure. So this is how this experiment is performed. Thank you for watching.